global warming forecast by scientists or scientific forecasts? We'll start out with the conclusions and then we'll tell you how we got to the conclusions. Uh, basic conclusion is that uh, the predictions of global warming are forecast by scientists and they're not scientific forecasts. In fact, we've been able to find, unable to find a single scientific forecast to, su to support global warming. And we've tried hard. My background is uh, heavily oriented towards forecasting. I'm the founder of the Journal of Forecasting, the International Journal of Forecasting, and the forecastingprinciples.com site, author of Long Range Forecasting and 70 papers on forecasting, editor of the uh, Principles of Forecasting Handbook, which we draw upon in doing this study. Details about me at jscottarmstrong.com. Our contribution, uh, I work with Keston Green from New Zealand. Actually, that means he does most of the work these days. He's a, an excellent scientist. Uh, our paper, Global Warming Forecast by Scientists versus Scientific Forecasting, is forthcoming in uh, Energy and Environment. It's a special issue by Bernie Pieser on uh, the IPCC forecasts. The important thing to remember is that uh, we're experts on forecasting methods, not on climate. Uh, up until a year ago, uh, I knew hardly anything about climate. All my friends knew more than I did. They knew that there was going to be global warming. Uh, I needed a paper for this last forecasting conference, so Keston says, let's work on uh, climate forecasting. Neither of us have received funding for our studies. Uh, we've see, received a little bit of sponsorship from the International Institute of Forecasting for the, uh, for the site and for the climatebet.com where we talk about the uh, bet with Al Gore. It's clear that global climate does change, but the big issue is what does that mean for the future? Can we forecast the changes. I, I like Alec Cancross's uh, poetry. I don't like a lot of poetry, but this one strikes me. A trend is a trend, but the question is, will it bend? Or will it alter its course through some unforeseen force and come to a premature end? What do we mean by scientific forecast? Um, well, as we define it, we mean evidence-based methods that the People use methods that have been shown to work through prior studies, comparative studies, and uh, that's our definition of evidence-based. And it turns out that over the past half century, uh, there's been an amazing amount of research done on forecasting methods. Uh, some of these, uh, some large-scale studies like the Macrodacus competition, where they have different people come together and compete on forecasting the same set of data and which model works best. So uh, these, the results of these studies are translated into principles. So if you're in forecasting, you can go to this site, the forecastingprinciples.com site, and our, uh, sort of our claim is that all useful knowledge about forecasting is provided on this site. Now, if anybody wants to challenge us, then they have to send us what we're missing, and we put it on there, and we keep the claim. So we're hoping people do challenge us. The uh, site is free. It's easily accessible. Uh, for the last few years, if you go on uh, Google and do a search for forecasting, where we've been number one on just about any search engine, I think there's like 33 million sites you get, and it's easy to find. Um, the uh, Principles of Forecasting book has been out since 2001, and that's also easy. It's a little more expensive, uh, but it's available. Uh, here are some examples of some evidence-based principles. And one of the things I like about research in this area is uh, some of these principles are counterintuitive and uh, catch people's interest. Uh, the first one, experts' unaided judgments have little value in forecasting over time. Um, I'll tell you a little bit more about that later, but I found that one rather amazing. It was originally done by researchers in psychology and economics. 
agreement among experts is very weakly related to accuracy, but it's uh, very highly related to the confidence that they have in their forecast. A third uh, principle, and these are, there's actually 140 of these principles. And uh, we've gone through and looked at these principles in light of, uh, uh, in this case, climate forecasting. Uh, a third is that uh, complex models harm forecast accuracy under uh, certain given conditions. Um, and the fourth one that we pay attention to here is uh, uncertainty. When you're uncertain about a situation, you should really be very conservative about your forecast. So those are some examples. Uh, the forecasting problem, if you're going to make policy recommendations based on global warming, uh, you have to have accurate forecasts for three different areas. One is uh, you have to have an accurate forecast that, uh, about the direction and the amount of change in long-term temperatures. Uh, secondly, you have to have forecast about the effects of these changes. Are they good or bad? What happens? And so forth. And the third is that you have to have effects uh, about uh, forecast of the effects of feasible policy changes. And now, if you fail on any one of these three areas, then uh, you're sort of out of business. You're, uh, uh, and we only look at one of these areas today, or primarily, and that is uh, long-term temperature change. So we look primarily in that paper at forecasts of medium to long-term forecast of temperature change. An interesting thing we found is, uh, when we get into this, is some of these climate modelers say, uh, we're not making forecasts. We're just uh, presenting possibilities. I, it's sort of like going to see a disaster movie. Uh, uh, Kevin Trenberth was at our forecasting conference, and that was his basic thing. He said, we're not making forecasts, he told me. And then as I sat watching his talk, I kept count of uh, the number of times he used the words prediction and forecasting, and I found that there was a lot of occurrences. They obviously make forecasts. The word forecast and its derivatives occurred 37 times. Uh, and predict and its derivatives occurred 90 times in the body of the report of uh, chapter 8 of the 2007 IPCC report. That's the primary thing we look at. The, we looked at other papers, but we focused primarily on the uh, chapter 8 of the 2007 report. What's going on then is that uh, these scientists who know a lot about climate uh, are expressing their judgments. They're expressing their judgments in how they make the model, they express their judgments in how things come out of it, they revise them to suit uh, what they believe. So uh, we call those expert forecasts. We're not uh, unusual in this respect. There's been other scientists that also, also have said that uh, these are just, uh, these models are just uh, mathematical and complex ways of expressing people's opinions. Uh, Tilpi and Tilpi Jarvis uh, had this opinion. They said uh, today's, oh, and they also said that, uh, that this 1934 a uh, quote from Telsa, which is, today scientists have substituted mathematics for experiments. They wander off through equation after equation and eventually build a structure which has no relationship to reality. So that was what Pilkey and Jarvis thought of 